Hi everyone, welcome to lesson 3. The heading for our lesson today is the influence of BCM. Initially, it is stated that BCM enjoyed government support. They were actually loved by the government. Why? Because BCM, that's the explanation of the why, ne? because BCM advocated for the separation of the two races, black and white. The government thought BCM was actually in support of the homeland system, in support of apartheid, which also talked about separation of the two races. They were totally wrong. What was the point of the BCM then? BCM is the same point we explained in the previous lesson, that BCM was against this cooperation between white and black, while black was still weak. Weak because they were still feeling that inferiority complex. So the government misunderstood that. When it was clear that BCM was actually against the government, then the government started chasing after them seeing now that they were not in government support of apartheid policy. After the government was aware that BCM was not for them, really they were no longer government babies, so there was no support for them. What was available? How did the BCM then function? Okay, there was NUSAS at first day. What was NUSAS? It's National Union of South African Students. It's a student movement. But there in New Sassne, there were both white and black students. So black students were not satisfied with New Sass. They wanted a truly black organization. All right. Then uh, there was also later UCM was formed, which is University Christian Movement. Yes, blacks had representation there. Now in a conference, UCM conference, these students decided to form SASO which was a nationally covering black organization, South African student organization. Now, what BCM was doing was to use the available structures, monies that the schools would give to SRC, for example, and SASO, and pretend as if they were pushing student affairs, whereas they were pushing political agenda. 